Our friends at Slifers will be having their annual car show from 10 to 3. The Farmersville Farm Day will be out at the park. And our friends at St. John's Ingemar will be having their ice cream social from 4.30 to 6.30. Rally Sunday and Youth Sunday is coming up on September 10th. There are many parts available for worship service. Please let Pastor know if you would be able to participate and what part you would like. The other announcements I leave to your own reading. Are there any other announcements this morning? All right, let us begin with prayer. O oh Lord, our maker and redeemer and comforter, we are assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We ask you to open our hearts by your Holy Spirit that through the preaching of your word we may be taught to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake. Amen.
the Lord a new song. For the, the Lord has revealed his righteousness to the nations. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Let the whole world resound with praise for God. For he comes to judge the earth. Lord, open our hearts to worship you in this house. And fill this hour with your presence in the house. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God. You are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy. Forgive us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask. Except through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I invite the children to come forward. Anyone who wants to? Oh, there's a step there.
If we think we can do things on the end, on our end, we will fail. But when we fix our eyes on Jesus, we can know that we will be saved. He has promised to protect and provide for us. When we pray and read our Bible and go to church and remember that God is near, we can take hope in His presence and path. I can swim much easier with the helper to and we can live much easier with Jesus to guide us. Jesus will keep us afloat. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for rescuing us from the stormy seas of love. Help us to remember to trust in you for strength and power. Help us to keep our eyes and hearts fixed on you. We can do nothing without you. Thank you for giving us strength. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Morning. Sorry about that. <laughs> the first reading comes from 1 Kings uh, chapter 19, verses 9 through 18, found on page 559 and 560. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king over Israel. And anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Mehola to succeed you as the prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword and Hazel and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I, res I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to, ba to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 5, found on page 1758. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it in the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, uh, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption, theirs is the adoption as sons, theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, 
the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. Here ends the reading. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and, beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed onto the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Here ends the reading, the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
In today's Gospel reading, Jesus' disciples are out on the Sea of Galilee, which turns out to be a scary place. A storm comes up and... Hi there! Oh, hi there to you too! Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm Robert Rackley. I was just looking for someone who got a key to the parsonage. That would be any of the trustees. They'd be able to help you with that. You must be one of the raccoons who lives next door to the parsonage. Sure I am. I just need to get in there for something. What do you need? I might be able to help. Um, Tish told me Josie has a swimsuit she doesn't need anymore. And it might fit me. I just finished swimming. Okay, I can help you get the key from the trustees after the worship service. Thank you so much. I love swimming, and I get to miss swimming in the lake. How long have you been swimming? Since I was small, being a raccoon, I love the water, and was even more excited when I got to start with swimming. That's great. Sounds like you're doing really well. Oh yeah, it's just taken me a while to get there and a lot of swimming in the off season. My uncle has a boat and we get to go out on it when we go to the lake. I like to drive off into the deep water. Sounds fun. Yeah, but I think it always used to be that way. I was scared of the water when I was really small, and I remember crying the first couple of times my parents and siblings tried to get me to go in the shallow end of our pool. So what helped you overcome your fear of the water? Well, I remember there was one particular time I was trying to lie on my tummy on the step in the pool. I must have slipped or something because all of the I started sliding and then sinking deeper and deeper into the water. I, I started to get really scared. I panicked and I started flailing around. But then all of a sudden I felt a pole underneath me. It lifted me up and I started bobbing on the top on the surface of the water. I was it was my older sister Rebecca and she was holding me up so I could swim. She started to take talking calmly to me, telling me everything was going to be okay. And I didn't need to be afraid because she was right there for me. Then I realized when she was holding me up, I liked the water and it was fun for me. So what you're saying is you were scared of the water, but then someone came and helped you when you thought you were drowning and you were able to enjoy the water. Yes. So every opportunity I got, I started swimming in the pool, in the neighbor's pond, in the lake. One time we went to Florida for vacation and I tried swimming in the ocean. That was really scary, especially since I was still kind of small. And my parents just wanted me to stay close to shore, but I tried wading out a little bit more when they weren't looking. Then all of a sudden, a big wave came, hit me in the legs. I did not me over. I started being taken out to sea. I How do you feel after trying to swim in the ocean? Well, I still felt a little nervous. I, when I tried to go back in, my parents also realized I needed some help, so they insisted one of my siblings to go with me. What they do is they hold me on, hold on to my paws while I went out a little bit at a time until I could go all the way out to the deep water and swim to shore. Even then, they still hold on to me to make sure I was safe. 
That was nice of them. Can you swim in the ocean now? Oh, yeah, but a two story um, old time sake, my siblings and I still like to swim together. We even race to see who can get to the shore first. My older siblings usually win, but one of these days, I'll get there before they do. I know you can do it. How come? I had a really good coach who helped me. My coach would be holding me up in the water during practice, teaching me how to kick and put out my arm so I could stay up. Then at meets, she'd get in the water with me. And when the announcer said, take your mark, the buzzer went off, I'd start kicking and waving my palm around. She hold me on to she hold on to me and encourage me to keep she sounds like she really helped you. Yeah, I remember too. There was one week I started to get really shy and didn't want to swim. I started to get really scared. I was going to drown. But the, my coach started talking gently to me and reminded me that she was going to be holding me up and be with me the whole time. That helped me feel better. So I decided to do the event after all. And I not only made it, I got there first. Excellent. Well, as it happens, everything you're talking about with your experiences is a lot like what happens in today's gospel reading. Oh yeah, I heard it when I was coming in a while ago. I remember it's about going out on a boat. Right. Jesus' disciples are sailing across the Sea of Galilee, which is actually a great big lake in Israel. It gets really windy there, especially at night and in the early morning. And what happens is they get caught in some bad conditions. The water starts swelling, which means it's rising really high, even higher than the boat can float. And the wind starts picking up and blowing really hard and blowing against the boat. Remember, boats don't have motors like your uncle's does. I know. They have sails. Yes, but if the wind was blowing in the opposite direction, that would mean the boat would be stuck in one place. And that's what's happening to the boat the disciples are in. They're surrounded by swells, the wind is going against them, and they can't move. They're stuck in the middle of the lake, can't go anywhere. So they get scared. Probably like how when you tried swimming in the ocean for the first time, got swept out to shore, and couldn't swim back because you were stuck in one place. I would be too, and yeah, it was just like that. To, to make things worse, they started seeing a shadowy figure coming towards them on the lake. Then they really thought they were in trouble. Back in those days, people believed that ghosts would come out on the lake at night, especially ghosts of people who had drowned. They also believed that if you saw a ghost, that meant you were about to die yourself. Oh no, I've never seen a ghost, but I can't imagine how freaked out they were. To say the least. But then something wonderful happened. happens. They realize it's not a ghost. It's their friend, Jesus. He tells them, it's me, don't be afraid. Just like your sister Rebecca did when she helped you that one time. He's saying, I'm here, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. I've got you and you're going to be safe. I think I know what you're going to say next. He does the same thing for us today. Whenever we feel scared or overwhelmed or we're stuck and can't go anywhere, Jesus comes to us and says, I'm right here and you're going to be okay. Yes, what we have to do at those times is pray and ask for help. The hardest things for us to do a, a lot of the time is ask for help. We want to try to fix everything ourselves, but we can't always do that. But when we feel like we're losing control and we don't know what to do, 
we can remember there's always someone who knows exactly the right thing to do, Jesus. We also have to wait for him to come at the right moment and to come to us in ways we don't expect. That's also what happens in today's story about Elijah. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves yet. Okay, actually, it's like when I was in the pool or in the ocean, I didn't expect someone to come and help me, but someone did. Come and think of it. I was, it was when I was screaming for help that my parents saw me and my dad came running to get me out of the water. But I had to yell out for help. And that's what we have to do as well. Call out to God for help. He will always help us whenever we ask him, and he's always available for us at any time, anywhere. He's also with us not just when we need help, but at every moment. Every good thing we have is a gift from him, and he's always with us to get us through the bad times. So he's always there to calm and comfort us. But doesn't someone try to walk on water too? Yes. Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, decides he wants to try walking on the water to make sure it's actually Jesus and not a ghost trying to trick them. So Jesus, because it is really Jesus, invites Peter to come out on the water to him. Peter starts doing so, and even though he's able to make it at first, he looks around at the high waves and feels the wind blowing hard at him and then he starts getting scared and sinking. Jesus reaches out a hand to pull him up and then ask him, why did you doubt? He didn't think he could do it? Like he didn't have enough confidence to do it? Not quite. Here's the thing. Usually we read this story and we think Jesus is scolding Peter for his lack of self-confidence like Jesus is saying that Peter should have had more confidence in himself, that he would have the ability to walk on water. But that's not what the story is about at all. Jesus isn't asking Peter, why did you doubt yourself? Why did you doubt your power to walk on water? Because Peter didn't have the power to walk on water by himself. Jesus was giving him the power to walk on water at that moment. Jesus was helping Peter do what he needed to do. It was when Peter saw the waves and wind that he started to lose sight of Jesus and he began sinking. So what Jesus was actually asking Peter was, why did you doubt me? Why did you doubt my ability to help you? Again, Jesus is always there, but we have to believe he's there for us. Ask him for help and give him control. Just like you had to trust your coach was going to hold you up in the water during your assisted swimming events and wasn't going to let go of you. We have to trust Jesus the same way. We have to give control over to him, let him take charge, and trust he's going to hold on to us. And the wonderful thing is, he always does. He's all powerful so nothing can stop him or stand in his way and especially nothing can keep him from helping us. The only thing that can do that is if we try to go on our own and do everything by our own powers and abilities. Like if I tried to swim without my coach holding me up, I probably would have sunk. Yeah, I had to keep trusting my coach and not doubt that she was going to be there, going to hold me onto me higher. Even though we, there was that one time I got scared, Right. Now, I mentioned today's story about Elijah a while ago. That's another case where God shows he's always there, even when he seems like he isn't. What's going on there is Elijah is running from the evil queen Jezebel, who wants to kill him, because he's been telling people to stop worshiping idols. But people have still been turning away from worshiping the one true God, worshiping idols, and doing wicked things. So Elijah feels like he's just wasting his time. He doesn't feel like he has anywhere to go. He's even ready to die. 
So God tells Elijah to go up a mountain and promises he'll show himself to Elijah there. So a wind, earthquake, and fire happen, but God's not in any of those. But then Elijah hears a soft, quiet voice, and then he realizes God's there. This calms him down and helps him feel better, since he knows for sure God's with him. Even though, like Peter, he didn't have any confidence in himself, he realized he needed confidence in God, which he got once he believed God was there. A lot of the time, God works in small ways, and sometimes he's doing, he's doing, and sometimes what he's doing isn't so obvious until after it happens. And actually, God does things in a quiet way a lot of the time, and speaks to us in soft, quiet ways, so it's easier for us to be able to listen to him. If he were to, to do loud, noisy things or speak to us in loud ways, we'd be scared of him and we wouldn't want to listen to him. Just like if someone yells at us, we're less likely to listen to them. But if someone speaks calmly to us, we can hear them better. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, especially when I started Also, after God comforts Elijah by letting him know he's there, even in a still small voice, he tells Elijah to go anoint two men as kings. What God's saying is that he's always in control of everything that goes on in the world, and even in those cases decides who can be king over which country. Just like God is in charge of everything that happens today, even though bad things like wars, famines, and even pandemics happen, God is still working behind the scenes to fix things. Whether it's raising up people or causing other events to happen, God is always making things better. But again, what, what God speaking in a still, small voice shows is that he's usually working quietly and having things happen in a low-key way like having Elijah anoint the king secretly without any major ceremony. One of those kings, Jehu, will eventually overthrow Jezebel, which means God will ultimately win, like he always does. Yay! God also tells Elijah that he's preserved 7,000 people who haven't worshipped idols and who are still faithful to him. He's comforting Elijah that way by letting him know what he's doing for God isn't a waste of time. Elijah already has people on his side who are supporting him, who are with him, will be encouraging him, and will help him succeed in his mission. Just like when you started swimming, you had your siblings and your coaches who encouraged you, helped you, and were with you to help you succeed. Yep. God always sends people to encourage us whenever we feel like we're having to fight any battle alone. So we're never actually on our own. God is on our side, and so are many other people, like people who pray for us, speak in encouraging words to us, to us, and help us in different ways. Talking about how God usually speaks to us in quiet ways, that's why he sent his son Jesus in the first place. If he were to appear in full force, everyone would be afraid of him. But Jesus becoming a human like us meant that everyone was able to relate to him better and able to listen to him, and so listen to God better, because he was gentle and humble. He also did something that didn't seem to be powerful or meaningful. He died on the cross. 
But that was the way God defeated all his greatest enemies, especially death and the devil. Just like in Elijah's time, God was doing something in history to make things better forever. Then Jesus finally did something powerful. He came back to life, which means that he lives forever. And because he lives forever, that's why he's able to be there for us at all times, to help us in every situation, which just shows, once again, God always wins. Yay, God! Well, it's been great chatting with you, but I know you need to get back to your worship service, so I'll just run along right now. been great chatting with you, too. Oh, I wanted to let you know, just in case Josie's suit doesn't fit you, or it doesn't work out otherwise, my granddaughter has a suit she outgrew a while back, and I could bring it for you to try on. That'd be great. In the meantime, I'll meet up with you after the service and help you find the trustees so that they can get you a key. Sound good? Sounds great. Thank you. See you later. See you in a bit. Thank you. 
And now we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the offering. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their need. Holy Father, we bow in adoration before your majesty. We stand in awe of your wisdom, power, and goodness. And we thank you for your strong, saving love made real for us in your, son, in your dear son. Send us your spirit to empower us to go into every corner of the world to preach the gospel of salvation through Christ alone. By your spirit, give it humility, faith, and courage to proclaim your holy word with faithful clarity and wholesome charity. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer, shelter us, and help us trust you. Lord, in your mercy. Look kindly upon those who are overwhelmed by winds and waves of grief and suffering. We know, that so, we know they sometimes feel abandoned by others and even by you. Help us to encourage, strengthen, and aid them. Help us to take their hand and walk with them across their stormy seas towards the nail-scarred hands of Jesus, who alone can lift them up and save them. Lord, in your mercy. Clothe with righteousness and wisdom all your servants who risk their lives in defense of life and liberty. Be their stronghold, shield, and refuge. Make them models of justice, integrity, and service. Lord, in your mercy. We lift before you everyone who is in need of your healing in mind, body, or spirit, especially those we name silently in our hearts. Save them from everything that threatens to undo them. Lead them to a place of shelter, healing, and hope. Bless everyone who cares for them in any way. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you, dear Father, for your servants who now rest from their earthly labors. 
especially those whose death touches us most closely. Give to us who still sail life's stormy seas faith to call upon you in confidence and hope. Give us love to encourage and help our neighbor in distress. And give us hope that clinging to your son for dear life, we come safely into your embrace. Grant that we, with all whom you have redeemed, may sing with joy and worship you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against you. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from all. And the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.